Hey y'all, this is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. All things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who's called according to his purpose. God has sent Jesus to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Freedom, my friends. That season may not be the thing that you wanted necessarily, but God needs you to learn something. Hindsight with God, you understand, but in the middle of stuff, you just gotta hang on and trust Him. We're not supposed to do for God, we're supposed to be for God. The doing is a side effect. Mm -hmm. God is able to bless you abundantly. If He can take care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, so more can He do for you. It's all going to work together for your good. If you love God, you just continue to stay humble, seek God, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto Albritton Studios, here's your host, Ricky. everyone and welcome to broadcast is love this is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase god's name because it's all about jesus living life on purpose for him he has a plan and a purpose for your life he wants to use the gifts and talents that he's given you to use you for his glory and that is a fun thing to do once you get into your gifting you know it because you feel good and today we're talking with lynn moyer she is the ceo and founder of luminate marketing and i am so excited to talk to you today lynn how are you I'm so excited too. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Ricky. Um, you are a big deal. I Googled you. Okay. You are a big deal. You are very brave for doing what you're doing and on such a big platform. So tell us a little bit about what you do, Lynn. So I have a company called Luminate Marketing, where we illuminate the messages of Christ in the world. And what that means is we basically have made a mission and a career and a lifestyle out of finding pastors, entrepreneurs, people who want to change the world for the Lord, people who God has tapped on the shoulder and giving given some type of calling, a nonprofit leader, an NGO, some type of a ministry here in the United States or around the world in dozens and dozens of countries. And so our role is to make sure that we provide exposure and visibility to the messages of Jesus and that we yes. leverage marketing channels and just the power of marketing channels and influence on behalf of the Lord and on behalf of his message, which we believe is the most important message to communicate to the entire world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, whoever is listening to this, like send up a praise to God. Like you are obedient and you are surrendered. I mean, you are surrendered to follow Jesus and use your position. And I mean, you don't get there overnight. Like what has God done to make you just raise your hands and say, God, I want to do your work. Well, I guarantee you that any listener also knows that you, Ricky, have the gift of encouragement <laughs> and joy because I'm just so pumped up talking to you. As far as like it not happening overnight, amen, yeah. that's exactly true. Yeah. So I actually was raised not as a Christian and I went to college not as a Christian a few years after college still not a Christian and I just had this crisis of faith where uh I have like really detailed all of this in my book City of Lights if you want to check it out it's on Amazon Barnes and Noble um but basically I got to like the summit and I was at the top of this high rise in Chicago where I basically wanted to be an executive. And I was giving this presentation, glass windows, skyline in the background, all the suits, all the stuff. And I'm like, wow, I really made it. I'm big stuff. And I like cried on my way home. I was oh. just like, so yeah. miserable and so heartbroken because I had realized that everything that I had worked for was so unfulfilling. And so in the book, the way that I explain it is it wasn't until I made it to the absolute top of the summit that I realized I hated, like I hated the entire mountain. Mm. And so it's like what I had been reaching and climbing for like 
the promotion, the name, the, you know, the affluence and all of that, it ended up being just so empty. And so after that, I like in a series of events over the next several months, I really had kind of like a rock bottom experience, accepted Jesus. Um, and I made a lot of major sweeping changes across all areas of my life, personally and professionally. And then I just waited. I waited for six months to hear what God would have me do. Now, hey, you know, now that I'm a Christian, God, are you going to send me to Africa? Are you? I want to do something big for you. And God's like, how about don't worry about doing something big? How about just worry about being for me and loving me? And I'll take you where you need to go. Don't worry about whether it seems impressive or whether it's going to take you places. I'll take you places. Being with me is the place that you need to be. And so I was kind of expecting some big, like, I don't know, like trip to Africa that, and I would just go there and be like, wow, this is so great and never leave. But that isn't what happened. What happened is God said, I'm going to leverage everything I've built in you. I'm going to ask you to keep doing what you've been doing, but this time for me. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's so pure. It takes so much surrender because our flesh wants the paycheck. Our flesh wants the job title. Okay. When you were talking, I'm just thinking about a college student who's listening to this. Like, I don't know who you are, but you're listening to this and you're thinking that you have to try to do something to impress someone or to impress yourself. And you're just like chasing this job that will fulfill you. And Lynn, can you talk to the student right now who is listening to this and thinking about their future and nervous and wanting to excel? Absolutely. In fact, I love talking to college students. So if you're listening and you find me on LinkedIn, Lynn Moyer, I would love to talk with you, mentor you, make myself available to you. Um, But the headline that I always just lead with is when you do, and you said it perfectly, Ricky, you're like in the beginning of this podcast, you said, when you find what you're meant to do, you're happy. It's true. You're you're filled up, up, you're filled with joy and you feel like your life has a purpose. That is really what we all want, right? Like not just to be happy because happy comes and goes. Don't we all want a purpose? Don't we want to feel like at the end of our lives, like, man, you know what? Everything wasn't perfect, but that was time well spent. And I I put my hand to the plow and I didn't look back. I didn't get distracted. I stayed the course. And now I get to go heavenward to Christ Jesus. And I can feel amazing about the way that I spent the limited time that he gave me on earth. So I always just say when I'm talking to college students and people looking to graduate and to excel, it's okay to want to excel. It's okay to want to be excellent. God is excellent. But the best thing to focus on is the unique calling and the way that you've been created and to honor that and to not downgrade it or say like, well, that won't make money or I can't do that for a living. What if maybe God will help you to follow the thing that he's put into your heart and into your life? And maybe at first it won't seem like it's going to be that impressive or that successful, but but I have found that when I find something that I love and when God is at the center of it, that's the key, by the way, not just finding Amen. something you love, but making sure that God is getting the glory and it's moving his kingdom forward. Yes. When that happens and your your energy and your mission and your focus, so focus is power, right? When you right. have your focus, and it's aligned and surrendered toward what God is doing in the world. He will lift you up. He will. He will. And he knows the plans that he has for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I mean, we know Jeremiah 29, 11, but when you're talking, I'm like, does a person listening to this podcast know that that's true for their lives? You know, it is true for your life. And when you were talking earlier about having that wonderful job title and, you know, the corner office, as people say, paint the picture of what your corner office would look like. Now think about this verse, Matthew 16, 26, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul or what shall a man give in return for his soul? And that right there just is like, Jesus, what am I giving to you right now? It's not so much even like the beauty of it, like you said earlier, how like we're talking maybe to a person that is wanting to move forward or to see God bless their life or to see like clarity for their future. The beauty is it's not about trying, it's about giving. And so you're giving, you're surrendering, but it's not the trying, it's not the striving. It says like he will keep at perfect peace, his mind who stayed on him. It says in Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for me. I need only to be still. And so it's not about trying to fight for what you think you need or hope you deserve. It's about laying 
focusing on your life for God and letting him lift you up. What are you giving? What are you giving? Give, give, give. Um, there is a quote and I I will try to find it, but it's by um Brittany or not Brittany, the girl from Hillsong, Brooke Lyd- Lydgerwood. Mm-hmm. Is that how you say mm-hmm. Lydgerwood? Um, Mm -hmm. and she has a quote and we've played it in this podcast before, but she says, um, to the next generation, you need to give, 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 and that it's all about the kingdom, God's kingdom and laying down your life, picking up your cross and following Jesus. And I just love everything that you're saying. I'm just like, this is awesome. I just have so much joy from the Lord, from listening to you and your story and I want to know more about why you love what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ricky, this is just going to be the first coffee of many because I can tell we're going to be great friends. Yes. Um, I love how you keep highlighting the word giving. So actually, this ties really well into what your question was. What do I, you know, what what do I love about what I do? But also, one of the biggest things that I do now is not even just Luminate Marketing. So what happened was we started Luminate. Um, I started the company in Chicago 13 years ago, and I lived in Chicago for 10 years. I recently relocated in the last several years to Atlanta, Georgia. And when we came to Atlanta, it's a longer story there, possibly a separate podcast, but that was an absolute like leap of faith. It was just like, what does it look like to knock on this door and let God open it, not push through the door, not break down the door, but let God open the door if it's the will of what he wants to do in our lives. And so um, it was the desire of God we ended up seeing for us to come to Atlanta. And then when we did, we were so blessed. I mean, we honestly, like my life is a testament to the kindness and the mercy of God because I wasn't living for him before I started Luminate and before I was saved. I was doing whatever I wanted. And then even after I started Luminate, I was just, I was like tentative. I, I wasn't um, like bold and courageous and just like the joy that you hear in me now. I didn't have that immediately as a brand new believer. I was excited and I was like fervent, but I didn't have confidence in Christ. Amen. And so yeah, that's now good. like o- over a decade later, I've, I've seen enough of God's faithfulness over time that it's given me such a confidence that I really don't have fear of the future. And I used to make like $20 an hour, $30 an hour for the first five years of Luminate. I was the only employee. It was just me. I mean, I'm really trying to like make ends meet. And I remember when I still was in Chicago, I went to church and I was single at the time, wasn't married, wasn't dating anyone. And I was sitting in church and just, I was sitting in the back row, absolutely crying because I knew I wasn't going to make my rent for the first time. And here I am trying to follow God thinking Luminate is what I heard him say, but maybe it isn't what I heard him say because now I don't have the money and I'm going to have to break my lease and da, 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 da. And I went home and there was like a $7,000 uh, check in the mail for like a tax refund for like the last three years or something. Somehow the IRS like didn't give me a refund, I guess, until that, like it was the exact same day that I was what? like, yes, I was. And that's how it is. People know that are listening. That's how it is. When you follow God. You know how it's like, he helps you down to the dollar. He helps you down to the cent. He makes it so that you know that only he heard your prayer and only he is the one answering it. It's just like, then last year for the very first time, Luminate made a million dollars of revenue in one year. Oh my goodness. Praise God. Right. And so last year we opened something called the Luminate Foundation. So you talk about giving. It's like now what I do is we pay all of our bills. We pay all of our people. And then we give as much as many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars we possibly can. We put it into our foundation and we give it back to the ministries, churches and nonprofits that need the finances to move the mission that God has given them forward. So rather than me even now focusing on like, oh, God's given me this calling. I'm doing this thing. Now it's like, no, I even lay that down. Now I'm the servant of servants. Now when I do make money, I give it back to the people that I serve. And I I actually kind of make the joke where it's like, am I just giving them their money back? It's like, they're paying me for marketing services. And then I'm putting money into the foundation because I love them. And then I'm giving them, basically giving them money back. (laughs) So I'm like, you know, that's a pretty messed up business model. Like for the world, the world would be like, wow, she really doesn't understand profitability. But the Lord's way is so backward to the the world's way. And so the fact that it seems like so weird that I would do that just goes to show that it is God's design for us to be generous with everything we possibly can and live on 
what's left over as opposed to all of like everything we want to have and just giving like the little bit of extra money that we really don't need. It's like, it's been so joyful for me and for my marriage. It's really unified my marriage even more that when we see quote success now, we aren't just dreaming about like, oh, what are we going to buy? Now it's like, how many water wells can we build with this? How many Mm -hmm. 55, like thousand kids are needing that one meal a day that they get in like the rural areas of Haiti, we have to send them to school, not just for education, but for the meal, for the nutrition and like the community and the the spiritual development and the water of like the water of life. So yeah, it's just, it's such a cool thing, Ricky. It's like, and I've heard of other people too, that have gone before me, mentors of mine that are much farther along than me that have even said, now, Lord, I give you my business. And they, they even give their business away. So it's like, there's so many levels of giving that we can do and it feels so good. Like it, it, it is so un, like undescribable how good it feels to give, not just to your kids, not just to your spouse or your right. family members or your neighbors, but like to really give yourself away, your life away, and then to give so much money away to people that you've never met and likely will never meet. But you know that you're sowing seeds that someday in heaven, I hope that we get to like, I don't know, maybe they have really good videographers in heaven. I don't know how that's going to work. But if I could like see a video and God could show me a video of like all the awesome things that have happened and all the things that we invested in, I would just be over the moon. That would be amazing. A a reel and not an Instagram reel, like a a little bit longer than an Instagram reel. We'll take. Yeah, I feel like like Instagram. Yeah, I'm not I'm not convinced social media will be in heaven. It might be (laughs) in the opposite. I'm not sure yet. Oh, my goodness. Lord, please don't give us social media in heaven. No more pain yeah. and suffering. No more. Yeah, suffering. amen. He's going to wipe away every tear from our eye. And that means the comparison on Instagram. <laughs> amen, sister. Your faithfulness is so encouraging to me. And for the person listening, I pray that you are encouraged by Lynn's faith in God. And right now, it's the new year. And I I would totally miss the boat if I did not ask you to define success for us as a believer, just to tell us what God has shown you true success is to you. Like what is success to you that God has shown you to encourage us as we start this new year? Yeah. Awesome. I think success is abiding. It's just staying in the vine. It's staying connected to the father. It's, it's, it's a relationship. Like that's the success. Like God is the end goal. He is the success. So whatever we may think that we are relying on God for, or maybe there's some type of like end goal, even like wanting my life to be impactful, even that is not the end game. The end game is Jesus himself. He's the reward. He's the gift. He is what we can lay our entire lives down for. And that's the end game. Yeah, he has the victory. There is a song. uh, I don't know if it's like a mainstream song or just something that shuffled through on my Spotify. But oh, it's called I See Grace. Hallelujah. I stand amazed. Do you know that song? Yes. And he goes, I'm staring at an empty grave and the stone that you rolled away. And I'm like, (laughs) you rolled it away. Like, God, you have the victory. Every time I hear that song, I'm like, hands up, hallelujah. Like, I have to remember to grab the steering wheel. Totally. Um, Micah Taylor, uh, I See Grace. So if you're looking for a song today, check out that song. <laughs> but And while we're on a roll with song recommendations, yeah, go I'm for rolling it. rolling up to the office today and listening to Brooklyn Firewood again. We've got a bit of a theme here. Yes. Um, but that song is Honey in the Rock. Oh. And there's a whole section of the middle of the song where all she does, her and the choir, all they do is repeat over and over. I have all that I need. I have all that I need. I have all that I need. It's like there's honey in the rock. There's water in the ground. Everywhere I go, there's bounty in the desert. It's like I have everything I need. So even in times of disappointment or not knowing what's next, if we just remember that we have all that we need for this coming year in 2023, God has already gone before us. He's made a way. He is the way. And the beautiful thing about it is in him, our end goal, our quote success for the year, we have all that we need already. Yes. I don't need to worry now that I- There you go. (laughs) There you go. Yep. I'm telling you, I love that song. I love it. Everything I need, you've got. There's honey That's in the right. rock. Like, God, That's you right. will provide. And exactly. you are a fun God. Like, God is so fun, too. I mean, he is 
a good father. And I just, I love being a believer. I love being a Christian. He's kind of funny. God definitely invented humor because sometimes it's like, you know, when you're praying for something, you're like, oh Lord, you know, please answer my prayer. Can I hear from you, God? And he just gives you a couple of words that kind of like put you in your place immediately. And you're kind of like, oh, right. Like that is a good point, God. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, Like, oh, your ways are higher. Yes. You're right. right. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I am so grateful to be talking to you right now. Um, Sydney gave me your contact information. He's my sister-in-law, one of my sister-in-laws. And she was like, you have to talk to Lynn with Luminate Marketing. Like she loves the Lord and would just love to hear her on your podcast. And I was like, yes, absolutely. And praying for this conversation, I was like, God, what do you want to ask? Like, Mm -hmm. what, what do you want us to talk about? And he wanted me to ask you, who have you helped? And I just think that's a kind of a weird question to ask someone, but I don't know. I mean, his ways are higher. Like, tell us a little bit about who you have helped with Luminate. Yeah, definitely. So I, I think I always like to think of wanting to start, like, I want to be loyal and obedient in my inner circles already my life i want to be loyal and obedient in my marriage in my with my employees with our contractors with our vendors with our clients i never want to take a shortcut i always want to think what can i do to move someone forward how can i bless their career how what's the mentorship how can my experience become their shortcut Mm -hmm. and so that's the first piece honestly like not super like, you know, worldwide mission, but just being faithful to where God has put me right here. Um, you know, being a faithful neighbor, um, being kind of having like the ministry of avail- availability and awareness so that if I'm at the store and I see someone that clearly is alone and struggling, I can just like rely on the Holy Spirit to say, God, is there like, is there something that you want me to say or encourage this person? Or is there a way that, is there something you want me to do even? And so that's, I feel like the very first thing that I can do as far as being, I guess, helpful is just being um, obedient to where I've been placed and being faithful. Again, not out of my own um, desire or ideas, but that same idea of like abiding and staying connected in the vine, because the Holy Spirit is the one that really will build me up and just give me the joy to overflow and also the discernment to know when to knock on that door and when to respect that it's closed. So um, I think that's the first piece. And then the second piece is uh, we served, I think, 56 clients this year with Luminate Marketing. So that's churches, ministries, and nonprofits locally, nationally, globally. And so that's everyone from um, in South Sudan. We have a client that is spreading the gospel by radio and providing clean water well maintenance. In uh, Ethiopia, we have a client that is providing meals to thousands and thousands of kids. In Haiti, we have a client that is uh, running a hospital that provides 250,000 free surgeries and medical treatments for free for local Haitians um, in the nation of Haiti every single year. And so there's all these things that were accomplished this year by God, but not necessarily through me or through Luminate, but through our clients. And so that's what I always say too. It's like, I can be proud of running a company the right way. I can be proud of the work that we do at Luminate. We want to deliver excellence. We deliver quality on time. But what we can be most proud of is the work that God is doing through our clients. I mean, that's like when we pray on Monday as a team, we have this thing called masterminds. It's kind of like this funny joke. It's like the meeting of the masterminds. We all come around the table, whatever. Anyways, when we pray in those meetings, it's like every single week we pray like, Lord, thank you for our clients, wherever you find them right now, build them up personally, build them up professionally, whatever concerns them, we pray you would address it, help them move the mission forward that you've called them to. Like just the way that we pray and invest and sow our hearts and our care into our client's mission, it makes us personally connected to them. And I think that actually helps us to do even better work for them as well. Yeah. I mean, and you do such diverse work like um, church welcome materials designed to fight human trafficking, like the strategy, the design, the website, branding and website, um, trafficking prevention, nonprofit, launching a new denomination. Like what is that? (laughs) What is that? Yes, we definitely touch a lot of different things at Luminate. 
And that's actually the other really cool thing about my particular job at Luminate. Because I own the company and because I believe it's a gift from God that he gave me to steward that he can take away at any time, by the way, I really like the fact that I get to be like, I call it like the protective gate. So obviously I rely on the Holy Spirit, but I do have a protective gate to say like, what clients do we want to serve and not serve? Even in the early discernment, like the sales process, you can tell when a client, like I can sense kind of the heart of who's coming through. Yes, All of that yeah. matters. When you're running a ministry and not just a business, all of that matters because I'm responsible for all of the energy and the time and the investment of our team. And I really should be mindful about where that goes. So it is a responsibility, but it's also a real joy to steward to say, yes, we touch lots of different causes, lots of different places, but there's also many things that we turn down for whatever reason. And I just have to trust God to know what those things are. Yeah. And while you're saying that, I just want to list a couple more things that you all do. Christian camps and conferences, church naming and design, um, church teaching materials. So just I just wanted to name those for the person listening to kind of get to know you more about how broad your marketing firm. Can I call it a firm? It's a nonprofit. Sure. Right. Marketing yeah, so we, we, yeah. We're a for-profit organization. So we're like a marketing company slash marketing agency. Oh, that's so cool. That's so you guys, <laughs> people tell me all the time that it's hard to find broadcast as love. So maybe I should ask for advice, but, um, anyway, yeah, like this is so cool what you all are doing. And I just love how you're helping people. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to share with who you've helped? Um, no, but I just love, I know I'm not supposed to be like interviewing you, but I really love your encouragement and your heart and your excitement, Ricky. It's just so special to meet a woman that's so alive in the Lord. And clearly he is sowing so much into you. And so on behalf of all your listeners, thank you for what you're doing and please keep up your calling because it's encouraging to me. And Aww. it's, I talk to people all the time that God's calling to do something and, and they reach out to me for marketing or fundraising or whatever. But not everyone is as joyful and as amazing and built up in like the spirit of God as you are. And so it really is special. Thank you so much. God is so kind to me to put the fire in me to do this podcast. And then just yeah. like his Holy Spirit is so at work in bringing in the guests for this because like we just met. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> Hi. Hi. And I love you. <laughs> like we've all, I've only been talking for 20 <laughs> minutes. Um, but every question or every question, every episode, we ask the guest what Bible verse is encouraging them in this season. And I'm so excited to hear what Bible verse is helping you out right now. Yeah, definitely. So I already quoted this earlier. Hopefully that's okay. But I yeah. think, um, and it's an, it's an Old Testament OG. We're going all the way back to Exodus. So right after Genesis, right in the beginning, but it still completely applies. And of course, Jesus is the fulfillment of all the promises in the Old Testament. And so the promise that God made in Exodus is that he will fight for us. And I just love that idea. Like wherever you may find yourself in life right now, it says the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And so I, and that's Exodus 14, 14. I think about the peace that I feel even just saying that out loud, it's a great scripture to say to yourself as you're driving into the office, or if you're driving to a medical appointment, or if you're driving to have a difficult conversation, I don't have to fight for my own rights. I don't have to fight for my future or what I hope it will become. I just need to be still, which is a very peaceful place to be. And the Lord will fight the battle on my behalf. Yes. Like if you're in a position where you can close your eyes I want you to close your eyes right now and think about Jesus looking at you. Like, just think about him looking at you and he sees you as he created you. He sees you perfect. Like he sees you as his daughter or as his son and he loves you so much and he has plans for you and we are starting off a new year. And I just want for whoever's listening to just look to God this week, a new year, look to God for one week. As my friend Carson says, I haven't talked about this in a long time, but just starting off this first week of 2023, look to Jesus and look at yourself, how God is looking at you right now in this moment for the rest of this week, commit to thinking about yourself 
as God thinks about you. And I don't know why I just felt led to do that. But when you were just talking, I was thinking about how God is seeing us right now. And he is happy. Like you said, Mm -hmm. God is Mm -hmm. excellent, you know, Mm -hmm. and be still in that. Absolutely. And when we think about 2023, a brand new year, a fresh start, who do we want to be? We want to be followers of God. We want to be his kids. And we're already there. Like no more striving, no more reaching, no more pushing and running. It's like we get to rest and be still. What if the best year yet for us means the closest year yet we've been to God? Maybe that's our best year yet. Oh, sister, (laughs) I might cry. (laughs) I just, I just might. I mean, oh, Jesus, like when we do things God's way, he has plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope in a future. And those are the plans that I pray that whoever is listening that we follow today, no matter your position, no matter your job, I just pray blessings over whoever's listening for your position, for your job, for your office, for the people who you see, for your family, for everything that you are thinking about that you want to accomplish in 2023. I just pray the word surrender over you and vision for Jesus, vision for Jesus in 2023. Is there anything else that you want to say, Lynn? I'm ignited by talking to you. (laughs) I feel like maybe one more thing. I wonder if there is someone listening that needs us to tell them to keep the faith. Yeah, It's just really simple. Keep the faith. And when the enemy or the world or when a person or ourselves even when we try to take that away or when we feel discouraged, if we can keep the faith, then we have like, it's a greater worth than gold. So I, yeah, I just want to encourage us in this coming year, no matter what happens, no matter what life brings us at the end of this year, as we would enter like 2024, where would we want to be a year from now sitting down in front of the tree, sitting down with the 2023 in the rear view mirror, I would want to be a person of faith that I can say, no matter what this, this year brought me, I kept the faith and I didn't waver in who I believed that God was. And I didn't doubt his character. And I just continued to keep moving forward by faith. And that, that was my successful year. Holy moly. (laughs) That was amazing. I surrender all (laughs) like Jesus, you are the King. Um, We want to connect with you. How do we get in touch with Lynn Moyer? Awesome. Well, I am pretty available online. I've got lynnmoyer.com. You can check that out. Lynn with an E. So L-Y-N-N-E or moyer.com. And then I'm Luminate Lynn on just about every social media channel that exists. So that's pretty easy. Consistently branded across all channels. Surprise, surprise. Um, But yeah, if you want to email me, you can email me lynn at luminatemarketing.com. And yeah, I would just love to hear from anyone that wants to connect, not just about marketing and fundraising, which I love talking about those things. If you're interested in pursuing those things as a career in Jesus, happy to talk to you about that. But if you are someone that wants to start a company, if you are um, new in your career, or if you're trying to figure out what has God made me to do, what, what am I supposed to do with this one life I've been given? I would love to talk with you. And hopefully anything that I've learned can become a shortcut for you moving forward in life. It's so true. Like the correct word is shortcut. Um, uh, Andy Stanley, he's, you know, Atlanta. When I was in high school, I heard him say, if you listen and learn, you'll go further faster. And what he was Mm. saying is like, listen and learn from the word of God, you know, like listen and learn, you'll go further faster. And it's like, yeah, that's it. That's pretty true. (laughs) Another cool thing, another cool quote from Andy Stanley that I really love, and this is for like all of the leaders out there. He says that sometimes we stress ourselves out and we have anxiety trying to solve a problem right in front of us. If I could just solve this problem, what's the way I can solve this problem? This problem is right in front of me. And he says, most things in life are not a problem to be solved. They're attention to be managed. And so there's a real wisdom to recognizing that life will bring things with it 
There are going to be ebbs and flows in our relationships, our organizations, our ministries, our church life, our relationship with God. It's less about solving a problem and more about abiding and more about just managing that tension um, between where we are and where we want to be. And I think the Holy Spirit is what fills that gap. Yeah. Abiding. Man, that's so good. I'm the vine. You're the branches. Thank you, Jesus, for Lynn Moyer. <laughs> I just love you. Okay. When can we do this again? I agree. I think this should be a seasonal. <laughs> We're going to have Lynn back every new season. Okay. It's spring break. <laughs> Lynn Moyer. Yay. Yes, oh my it. gosh. I love it. Yes. I'm, I'm in. I'm totally in. All right. Well, 2023, like we might need a Lynn check-in for sure. Um, let's pray. So at the end of every podcast, we always pray. And so we just want to encourage you to join us in prayer. We're going to pray to our heavenly father and just father, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for 2023. We pray that we decrease and God, you increase in Jesus name. I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and all of your wonderful listeners. May we keep the faith in 2023. Yes. In Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus name. Thank you so much, Ricky. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders, to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest.